Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks, Senior Pastor of Thrive Church, and welcome to the Prayer 365 Podcast, where we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I'm so glad that you're here with us, and it's so exciting to be able to come together one more time uh, to be able to pray together. Now, listen, as you come in, take a moment and say hello in the comment section. After you do that, hit the like button wherever you are. That helps tremendously with the Facebook and YouTube algorithms, simply letting it know that prayer matters to you. And after you do that, I want you to think of someone who can benefit from the from the power of prayer and share this with them. One of the ways you can do that is by sending a text message. Just simply uh, text them, uh, let them know, hey, come and pray. You got people that are up getting ready. Play it loud in the house so that everybody can hear and be a part of it together. Um, or even tag someone on our virtual prayer wall. And I believe that they'll be first attached to this prayer. We believe that by faith. But then in addition to that, they'll be notified if they're on Facebook, if you tag them in the comment section. All right. Got about two minutes before we get started. I'm going to jump over here to the conference line and greet those that are there. And then we'll make our way around. All right. So let's see here. There we go. Uh, good morning to you, Brother Randy. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Pastor, and God bless you. Praise God, sir. I received that blessing. Uh, Sister Mary Davis, good morning, and God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you. Praise God, Sister Mary. I received that. And Sister Betty Reed, good morning, and God bless you. Good morning, Pastor. God bless you and your family. Praise and God. Hey Amen. We received that, and, and good morning, and God bless all of y'all that are on the line. Uh, that's Melissa, Courtney, and Corey. Is that right? Yes, Pastor. Good morning, and God bless you. Praise God. I received that. And then we have my grandmother, Sister Rosemary Garrett. Good morning, and God bless you. Hey Amen. God bless you and my family. Praise Good God. Day. All right. Well, for all of you that are on Facebook and YouTube, we praise God for your presence. We got about a minute uh, before we've got to get started here. Um, I'm going to go through as many names as I can. Let's see here. All right. I just needed to make sure that I had my had my Bible prepared as well. Uh, but let's go through as many names as we can here. Um, first thing first, I see my beautiful bride, First Lady Chanel Brooks. Um, we give God praise for her. Um, that's uh, that's my good thing, y'all. <laughs> Sister Christina Maria Perkins, God bless you. Uh, Sister Mitris and Brother Marence, God bless you in the Wingfield household. Uh, Sister Vivian Morgan, God bless you and Brother Terry. Sister Marcy Kova, blessings to you and Brother Demetrius. Uh, Sister Margot Pittman, God bless you. Sister Takara Glover Henderson, God bless you. Sister Amanda Flowers, blessings to you. Uh, Sister Lena Arterberry, God bless you. Sister Bonnie White, we praise God for you. Brother Curtis Johnson, blessings to you, sir. Uh, my mom and my dad, Elder Marion and Deacon Derek Clark, God bless you both. Sister Denise Andrews Graham, God bless you. Brother Jermaine Lately, blessings to you. My brother Victor Askew, God bless you, sir. Brother Terry and Sister Connie Johnson, God bless you both. Sister Shangria Maynard, God bless you. Um, one of our newest members of, the, of Thrive Church, we praise God for her, as well as her daughters. And uh, Sister Novella Dwight, God bless you. Brother Marquez Smith, blessings to you, sir, and your family. Sister Wanda Wright Walker, God bless you. Sister Bernadette Demps Jackson, blessings to you. All right, we've got to prepare to get started. But Sister Evelyn Davis, God bless you. Um, let's see here. Sister Beverly Wright Brinson, God bless you. Sister Didi, blessings to you and Brother James. Sister Ren Sister Rena, almost said Renee. <laughs> Sister Rena. Prater Smith, God bless you. Sister Priscilla Grimes, blessings to you. Mother Rosa, uh, we praise God for your presence. 
Uh, let's see here. Sister Alma Thomas, God bless you. Brother Curtis Ferguson, blessings to you, sir. Uh, Brother Gregory Moore, I believe that's possibly my brother. Uh, perhaps, maybe they're playing it in the house. I'm not sure, but God bless you. And uh, Sister Tawana Brooks, God bless you. And to all of you, I receive every one of those blessings. Amen. Okay, it's time for us to get started. Uh, so let's go ahead and and, and, and press right on in, brothers and sisters. Grab your Bible. I want you to flip with me to uh, the 24th chapter. Excuse me. Let's see here. We're actually in the 26th chapter, rather. 26th chapter of Matthew. And we're looking at verses 36 through 39. Again, that's Matthew chapter 6. Chapter 26, got to get that right. Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 39. All right, let's read. It says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That's Matthew chapter 26 verses 36 through 39 out of the New King James Version. Good morning to all of you thriving people of God. My name is Enrique Brooks, senior pastor of Thrive Church and the host of the Prayer 365 podcast. I'm so glad to have each of you here today on this Testimony Tuesday. Amen. On Tuesdays, we take a moment and we tell on Jesus. We talk about his goodness. We say and tell somebody of what the Lord has done for us. If you have a testimony uh, that you've been burning up to share, I want you to put that in the comment section. Whatever it may be, um, it, it doesn't matter how large or how small you may consider it to be. Um, if it's a testimony of what God did, it is significant. And I encourage you to put that in the comment section at this time. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, um, we're going to um, proceed on into our devotional momentarily. But before we do that, I do want to uh, announce a couple of things. Um, first thing first, on September 11th, which is the second Sunday in the month of September, uh, we are going to have or, or do perform baptisms uh, that Sunday morning during our Sunday worship service. If you desire to be baptized, I do encourage you to take the time to sign up, um, go to thrive.church forward slash connect. That's thrive.church forward slash connect. Go and uh, register to be baptized. Just simply sign up. That way we can have you identified and make sure that you are, um, that you're fully prepared uh, for the baptism service on September 11th. So again, go to our connect page, our connect center online, thrive.church forward slash connect. If you have the Thrive uh, app, and that's Thrive with a Y, T-H-R-Y-V-E. If you have the Thrive app, hit the Connect tab at the bottom right corner, and you'll see on there, uh, I want to be baptized. All right? Uh, go ahead and do that, and that way we have you prepared. In addition to that, I, I do want to extend an invitation to you to join us on our Sunday worship experience this upcoming Sunday. Um, we're continuing this series titled Raising Kingdom Kids, and I believe that something special is happening in this series. Um, the messages, I believe, are actually impacting the entire family. We're being intentional about our children, about our youth. We're not just raising uh, another generation of, of babies. No, we're raising kingdom kids, and therefore we're referring to them as uh, young kings and young queens because we want them to know their significance in the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, uh, let's go ahead and, and press on forward 
and we're going to uh, step into this devotional uh, for this morning. I'm keeping my eyes open for any testimonies uh, that are being lifted in the comment section. You still have an opportunity to do that. Um, but we do have here a uh, sister Margot. She expresses that you said that you're still in the hospital, but you're keeping your faith said that the Lord is keeping you safe. Sister Margot, we praise God for that, Sister Margot. And we're going to continue to keep you lifted in prayer. Amen. We're going to we're going to pray this thing through and pray, God, uh, pray to the Lord for your total restoration. Amen. All right. Let's go ahead and get into our devotional. Uh, this week, we're in a theme titled The Garden of Becoming. The Garden of Becoming. I want you to say that aloud. I want you to put that into the comment section. Say The Garden of Becoming. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the picture in the background behind me, uh, and I'm not saying literally in the room, but on the screen, uh, that is a picture of what's believed to be the Garden of Gethsemane. And inside of that garden, um, it's a beautiful garden. Uh, within it, are there are multiple um, olive trees that are there. And um, when Jesus, in our scripture in Matthew chapter 26, uh, he's inside of the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's here. And we see that there's a parallel of this garden, as well as his life, as well as what we can see in our own lives. Let's just take a second and go back to the scripture for just a moment. It says, and this is Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 39. I may not read all of it, but I just want you to see, uh, see just a few things here. It says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. Remember, what does Gethsemane mean? It means a, uh, uh, an olive press. Gethsemane means an olive press. So the olives are there. Olive trees are there. But there's also a press inside of the garden. And so we can call it the, the garden of pressing, but we've been calling it the garden of becoming. All right. And he said, and he said, it says that they went to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began he began to become or began began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. What do we know about this garden, about this, this moment um, so far? Yesterday, we talked about how Jesus was here. This is the last place that he was at before he began on the road to the cross. This was the last place that he was at as he was uh, before he was arrested. And he spent this time in prayer. Why the Mount of Olives? Why the Garden of Gethsemane? Uh, we believe that in this garden, it was reminiscent of the process of his life. And what we discover is that um, even with the olive, uh, there are uh, there are five processes that the olive goes through in order for the oil uh, to be used, so to speak. And so the number one thing we said yesterday is that it has to grow. And so growing is the first step. Today, we're going to talk about the harvesting. And tomorrow, we're going to go a step further. And we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the crushing. And then we find that there's also the pressing and then the offering. And so, but today, let's bring it back here. We're going to talk about the harvest, uh, harvesting, the harvesting. Uh, what we find is that Jesus, he's been grown for this moment, but now it's time for him to be used. It's time for him to go uh, to begin this process of of the crucifixion to begin this process of being sacrificed. And so before he's able to actually um, 
before he's able to make it to the cross, first he's had to be harvest. Uh, what does harvesting mean for the olive? The olive is grown on the trees, but it can't be harvested at any time. It has to be harvested at the right time. For the olive, that's between November and December. Uh, olive trees normally are ready to be harvested between November and December of the year. What you'll realize is that the same is true about Jesus. Jesus wouldn't allow himself to be captured until it was the right time. For him, it was, a, it was Passover was the right time. So we find that the season has come. His time has come, and it's time for him to be offered as a living sacrifice for each of us. Now, when you talk about ourselves, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you are also in a garden. We are in a garden, and God is the master gardener. Yes, he is. Scripture teaches us from Genesis that God is a gardener. And then Jesus comes and lets us know that he is a gardener. Yes, yes. And so the gardener, he knows the right timing to pull the fruit from the tree. And so what I want you to know is that, number one, you've been chosen. I want you to say that, number one, you've been chosen chosen brothers and sisters you've been chosen for this moment when the gardener goes out for the harvest he has to choose the ones that are ready you've been chosen for this season you've been chosen for this moment of pressing and crushing you've been chosen to be used as an offering as a sacrifice so that the oil could flow from your life somebody say i've been chosen Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been chosen. But not only that, you were ready. Hallelujah. That's number two. Number one, you've been chosen. Number two, you were ready. I know you may argue to say I was not ready. Sounded like Kevin Hart. I wasn't ready. No, no, you are ready. You may not believe it, but God would not have chosen you if you weren't ready. He would not have selected you if you weren't ready. You were ready for this moment. I know that it was uncomfortable, as even Sister Vivian mentioned, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. I'm going to pull up her testimony in just a moment. But, but there's a great sense of discomfort on the, on the behalf of the fruit when it's removed from the tree. Think about this. Uh, this this fruit or this olive has spent this season growing slowly and it's become comfortable with that location it's become comfortable with all of the other olives hey how you doing olive how you doing how you doing olive green how you doing that's that's actually somebody's name uh, how you doing over there or oliver I, I would say rather uh, here it is they're just they're just comfortable in that spot and then suddenly, uh, here comes the gardener or the workers being sent by the gardener and says, all right, it's time for you to come off. And, you, and, and he pulls and says, oh, oh, what do you mean it's time for me to come off? Uh, number one, that was painful. You pulled me from my place of comfort. Remember what's necessary for following Jesus? You got to deny yourself pick up your cross and follow him. That means you got to leave your place of comfort. And so this olive goes through a season of disorientation. It's saying, you're taking me to a place that I've never seen before. You've put me in a position that I've never seen before. The same is true about you. How many of you right now, you feel like I've never been in this place before? God, what is going on? Where am I? I want you to know that it's harvest time. You were chosen because you were ready. And I want to pray for you because I want you to know that this season is intentional. No, what you've experienced and the hardship that you've experienced, it was not caused by God. But I want you to know that it was allowed by God because he's using it to prepare you to release the oil from your life and to get glory from your life. Now, Father, uh, Father, before we even pray, I, I got to share this testimony because I saw it pop up and then we're going to pray. Uh, let's see here. Sister Vivian, Sister Vivian married a Morgan. She says that uh, you've been saying that we have to become uncomfortable to get out of the normal. 
She said, I was invited to my first stakeholders meeting. And she said, I'm thinking, what do I have to offer my offer to my job about that um, that could be beneficial? And God said, Vivian, why not you? As I attended the meeting, being in my un uncomfortable mindset, but by the end of the meeting, I felt that I felt that all was leading in the decision. I felt that all that was leading in the decision making out of my group of chosen, out of my group of chosen, and I knew then that it was by God's grace that He was um, that He was always there leading me before I entered the door. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that is where the faith, uh, where the growth is. I'm going to say that again. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that is where the growth is. Thank you, Father God, for testing me. My Lord, uh, I thank you for sharing that. I thank you for sharing that, uh, Sister Vivian. Uh, that's powerful. And I'm excited about that transition. I'm excited that God has moved you to a place of discomfort. It sounds to me like you got harvested. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, my mother, Elder Marion Clark, she said that throughout uh, throughout the pandemic, she said that God has truly provided unexpectedly learned on yesterday that I'll be receiving a spot bonus at work. God is faithful and I am grateful for his everlasting love towards us. Well, praise God for that. We give him praise for that, my Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sister Rena, that's right. It's harvest time. <laughs> it is harvest time. I want to pray for us today because I want you to be encouraged in this season. Perhaps you are that person that's disoriented right now. You're the person that feels very uncomfortable in this moment. It's OK. You're in the hand of the gardener. The gardener has you in the place that he wants you to be because he's preparing to get glory out of your life. Let's pray. Father, we honor you on this testimony Tuesday. Father, we, we came today to exalt your name. Father, to magnify you, to glorify you, and Father, to bless you because, Lord, you are worthy. Father, you are worthy of our glory. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of the honor. Father, we stand in awe of your majesty. We stand in awe of your grace, of your greatness, Father. We stand in awe of you, Father. You are the great and mighty God. You are Jehovah. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are Elohim. Father, we we bless you today. And Father, we magnify your holy name. Father, forgive us of our sin. Father, there's somewhere that I fell short, something I did, something I said, probably even out of response to being disoriented. Father, even out of response to being made uncomfortable. And Father, I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness and make me right in your presence, Lord. Father, from this place, we just want to tell you thank you. Father, we thank you for the testimonies that were lifted. But, Father, we thank you for all that you are doing in this season. God, we thank you that uh, whatever you were doing in this season, you didn't choose to do it without us. Father, we've been harvested for a time such as this. Father, we thank you even for the disorientation, Father. I pray for my brother and my sister that, God, that they would, that they would find a peace in this transition. That, Father, that they would find a peace in being held in your hands. That they would find a peace in knowing that, God, we can trust you through this process. Because as the gardener, you know the value that's hidden on the inside of us. You know the oil that can be released from our lives, Father, if we would be removed from where we were comfortable. So, Father, while we may not be where we were, Father, we are looking forward to where we're going. And, Father, I thank you that somebody his life will be benefited, uh, benefited through this season that we are experiencing. And Lord, I pray for courage. I pray for strength. I pray that, Lord, that they will have the power to continue, Father. And Lord, as we close out this prayer, we lift up Father, Sister Margot Pittman. Father, we pray that, Lord, that you would bring healing to her body. Father, that you would finish what you've started. Father, she is faithful. 
Father, she loves you, Lord. And Father, she trusts you. She even said, thank you for keeping her safe. Father, we thank you, Lord, for keeping her safe. And Father, we believe that, God, that you'll finish the work and that, Father, she'll make her way back home, Father. And God, we thank you for it, Lord. And Lord, closing this, we say that we pray the way that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us to pray. And we say, our Father who is in heaven. Holy is your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say amen. God bless all of you. My name is Enrique Brooks, senior pastor of Thrive Church. I love you. God bless you. Remember, it's harvest time. Uh, this is the harvesting. You were chosen because you were ready, and God's going to get glory out of your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Take care. Bye-bye.